Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SQL Server Performance Monitoring and Tuning video brought to you by SQLWorkshops.com. In this video, we will talk about SQL Test Essentials. One thing you would have noticed after installing SQL Test is when you move your cursor on top of a control, you get this detailed pop-up tooltip help. For example, let's do a simple test. We will set the number of threads to 1. We will change from duration 10 seconds to number of iterations to 1 and we will do a start all. When I do a start all, it will start this workload and it will execute this command, select attached version in this instance of SQL Server, SQL Workshops slash SQL 2014. Let's do start all and you see statistics, one iteration completed and this is the time, the DB time for that iteration. If we want to execute the same statement across two different instances and then I can change the connection string, the second connection string to SQL 2012. I just cut and paste now and change the connection string. So when I do a start all, it will connect to both of these instances. One thread will connect to this instance and then another thread will connect to this instance and they will run one iteration on them. So when we do a start all, you will see two threads participated and two iterations completed. If you move your cursor on top, here the help explains how to set these two connection strings. But after some time, you will find maybe this pop-up box to be annoying. In that case, there is a possibility to disable it. You can go to Tools and you can disable Tooltip. This Tooltip pop-up will disappear. And there is also a possibility to get help. It's called F1 help. You go to a control and you can press the key. For example, I am placing my cursor on the SQL command and pressing the key F1. When I press the key F1, it brings me this online help. It says what is SQL command, the batches and all the information about the SQL command. The other possibility to get to the online help is you can click on the question mark and you can click on a control. For example, we can click on select all. It will show you what is this button and how it functions in the product. In Windows, you can have either this question mark or you can have this minimize maximize button. With the question mark, of course, you can get online help, but you lose this minimize maximize functionality. To get minimize maximize, you can use this tool minimize maximize or you can disable this online help. Disable online help. Now you get this minimize maximize button. If you still want to get online help, you cannot use this question mark and click on the control. Rather, you have to place your cursor and press F1. It will still bring you online help. If you want documentation about SQL test, you can go to sqltest.org and click on documentation. It gives you set of documentation for SQL test. And if you have some questions and you cannot get the answers from the documentation, then you can go to the forum. There you can ask questions or browse through the answers. We already looked at Enable, Minimize, Maximize button. Let's look at what is Start All. So when you go to the SQL test, you have two possibilities to start a workload, Start All and Start Current. When you say Start Current, it will start the current workload, that is your workload one. In our case, when we start all, still only one workload runs because all other workloads are inactive. What do I mean by that? For example, our workload 1 has connection string. It has number of threads configured greater than 0 and number of iterations configured greater than 0. If you go to workload 2, here we say execute 0 iterations. It means this workload is inactive. When you go to workload 3, it says 0 threads because without threads you cannot execute any iteration and this workload is inactive. And if you go to workload 4, of course this workload is also inactive. That's why when you say start all, it starts this workload. 
and if you start current it will only start this workload and in this case there is no difference but if you go to workload 3 and you enable this workload by setting the number of threads to 1 now we got two active workloads that is workload 1 and workload 3 so if you say start all it will start workload 1 and workload 3 if you say start current while you are in workload 3 then it will start only workload 3 there is also a possibility to cancel query while the workload is running let's say we have this workload and here we want to run this query for 10 seconds when you say start current or start all you see this workload is running and it shows how many iterations it completed so far if you want to stop the workload you can click on query cancel this will stop the workload there is also a possibility to test your connection strings for this you can click on test connect when you click on test connect it will connect to all active connection strings that you provided for example we have workload 1 and workload 3 active so it tested the connection string on workload 1 and workload 3 it did not test connection strings for workload 2 and 4 it skipped because these two workloads are currently inactive there is a possibility to save your configuration in a file for example we have now two connection strings if you start a new instance of SQL test you always get the default that is set when the application was installed so if you want to save your custom workload you can click on file and save and you can say SQL test new this will save it in a file named SQL test new in whichever directory you choose to save it of course you can retry your saved configuration from file open whenever you start a new instance of SQL test it provides you the default settings that was supplied part of the SQL test installation it comes up with one connection string two threads 10 seconds of duration if you want to change this default so every time you start SQL test you want your own server name here and your own default then you can change it for example I can change the number of threads to one and number of iterations to one and I have to save it in a special file with the name SQL test default when I save it as SQL test default and if I open a new instance of SQL test it will read the default from SQL test and it will show you the default there is also a possibility to save your configuration in the database for this you click on file save to database here you can give a file name for example we can say SQL test new when I save it it will be saved in the database if you want to open it of course you can click on open from database and it will show you already saved configurations if you want to save it in your own instance then you can give the name of the instance where you want to save this configuration and you will also notice here the file name is there the person who saved it saved on and comments if you want to have comments showing up part of your open to database then you have to add a comment you go to settings comment and you say my test okay now if you save this using save to database we can overwrite it if we want yes and then if you try to open it will show you the comment you entered and of course it will help you to identify the configuration because the file name might not be explanatory thanks for watching